gear video and uh, we'll start with the pack and what goes on the outside of the pack. So here we have a 35 liter ultralight backpack with X pack material, um, mesh on the back, two pockets, uh, head belts that can be removed with uh, pockets in each, uh, the two straps with uh, kind of a ladder type of uh, webbing down the front, and uh, chest strap. It's fold down, and uh, I can't remember quite what the weight of it is, but it's, you know, in there with all the other lightweight packs. Bought this one from uh, AliExpress, and uh, got it on sale, uh, paid I think 145 Canadian, which was a deal compared to what these things normally cost uh, in the US. Uh, plus it would be American dollars, so I did pretty good. Um, the things to note about this particular pack is that even though waterproof material, there are openings, for example one over here, that would go inside for the hydration pack. And in the bottom of the pocket, actually the strap, that is the belt strap, which you probably can't see from there, uh, does run through the bottom of the pack, comes up the other side to this. So any water that might fall into here is going to go into the pack. Something I'm not crazy about, but uh, that's the way this one got designed and built. Also, there's a hole into the uh, bottom of the pocket. So anything you put in here that is big enough to fall through here, you've got another problem. So two kind of negatives about it, but other than that, uh, pretty positive. There are, ice, uh, I think they're ice apps hooks at the bottom here, and uh, the uh, shock cord that crisscrosses over the back of it. And uh, as I said, it is a fairly large area for uh, mesh to stuff things in here. What would normally go in here will be my fly, which I don't have here at the moment. That would go over top of my hammock. Uh, it fits quite nicely in here with the um, ground stakes. Uh, any cords that go in there, plus I can throw in things like my uh, raincoat when I know it's going to rain, and that type of thing. Uh, the pockets are kind of high. For me, I can't reach back and grab the water bottle in here. So I've made a, attached to my water bottles, which I don't have here, um, a contraption that I found on YouTube to hook onto the strap and use the bungee cord to hold the bottom of the bottle. So it stays there quite nicely. It doesn't walk, it doesn't flop around, and I have the ability to do for both pockets, if I, or both straps if I want to. And I have the, you know, required um, Purell with uh, a little flower, which I cannot remove. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything that didn't have a flower or a little kid type of thing on it. So, oh well, I'll just be the flower guy. Um, also, the pockets do have the ability to just pull on this cord to tighten up the top of it to keep things from falling out or snag up to it and a toggle to uh, release that. Uh, it's frameless, but there are these paddings that run up vertically up and down the pack. Uh, it's not designed to be an arc type thing, so it will be right up against my back. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. I really never have had one of the more modern packs that arc away from the body and leave that air gap in the back. So that would be nice to have. Anyway, so there's the pack. We've got a couple of carabiners on there right now. The straps on here are quite generous. I, uh, I'll probably just leave them on. I don't think I'll bother with uh, trimming them off to be super out light. I'm just a lightweight uh, camper anyway. So that aside, inside I'll be using these garden trash bags there type that are very tough and they expand when you press uh, pointy things under them. Uh, I'll also bring a stair. You know, they're so light, it's like a featherweight. You won't even know you even have it. Uh, in one of the pockets on the hip belt, I'll have my headlamp. I'm, I've ordered a different headlamp. I don't know if I'll be able to get it before I leave though. Um, so I may have to have that mailed to me on the trail. This is the typical pretzel, or pretzel, um, AAA, uh, three batteries. The typical mode strap. Um, in the one that I will be getting, I will be substituting the strap for the bungee cord um, instead. Well, it used to be a little bit lighter, I guess. It'd be like all the other kids on the block. Um, here's another thing I have. This is the ground cloth. It's one of those, uh, I think it's polypro, or, I don't know, 
there are the window insulation material that would uh, heat and shrink uh, to give you that uh, vapor barrier. Uh, they're apparently very tough, and this one is cut to be about seven feet long by about, I don't know, that wide, uh, three and a half feet, four feet maybe wide, one quarter of the original sheet I got. So I have three more for other camping trips where I can use one probably for my t uh, hubba hubba tent that I am not bringing, but uh, when I do camp with it. Uh, I have the usual seat pad. It's not the easy light type thing, but uh, it will do the trick. And I can also put that in my foot box of my hammock when I uh, have feet that are getting a little bit cold uh, if they hang over the edge of the uh, underquilt. In one of the pockets, I will have my toiletry bag. This will include my orange trowel, a little bit of toilet paper, and I have a device called a travel bidet. It's a little thing like that. It will go into one of the water bottles and I can clean with that and then sanitize with the Purell. However, in the winter time, I will be beginning with, I do not see myself using this in ice cold weather. So I have a little bit of toilet paper, which I will dump if I really like the bidet when I begin using it, or I'll continue to use the toilet paper. Okay, in that pocket or the other pocket, I have a um, silicone impregnated ripstop nylon uh, poncho, that's what it is. And uh, I haven't used it yet, but you know, it uh, gives me the ability to I can protect the pack and my back from water dripping back there. Um, I've never really used a poncho, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to like it, but people who I have watched on YouTube have been very up on using a poncho. In here, I have my water pur purification. Uh, I have the water gatherer bottom of a plastic bottle. I'm using the Sawyer, uh, not the mini, but the micro, I think it's called, uh, with the uh, water bottle top. I also have the adapter so that I can screw that on to connect to other things. And I'm carrying a platypus two-liter bag. This will be a dirty water bag to fill my water bottles or to uh, add extra water on the trail should I need it. I do believe I have a cap. I don't know where it is, but I'll have that on there to keep the water from dripping out of it. And oh, yes, I have a uh, compressed <laughs> foldable umbrella. I use umbrellas on camping trips and uh, walk with them hiking. Uh, don't use them when you're using the hiking sticks, but I have seen where people have tucked it into the chest belt or the chest strap and let it hang and they just have it sitting on top of their head. And uh, anyway, it allows you to use things like cameras and that type of thing underneath uh, the umbrella and uh, in camp. It's great to be able to just throw that up and walk around if you have to go to the privy or something like that. This is the pack cover, although it's waterproof. As I said, there are openings and, you know, it's just one more thing that I might want to use if I don't want to use it. Well, it's pretty light and I can, I made it myself. So it's not like a big thing to uh, dump into a uh, hiker box and forget about it. And lastly, I have this little mermaid a friend of mine gave me, uh, Sybil, and I'll be hanging this in my pack and hopefully people won't be calling me merman. And I think that's it. Okay, now in this part of the video, I'll talk about my sleeping arrangements for my home away from home. I'm using a hammock. This is a DIY hammock. Uh, I think it's about 11, 11 and a half feet long with a fixed ridge line. Actually, the ridge line is one that I have talked about in my other video, which I may or may not have uploaded, uh, is adjustable. So I can kind of figure out on the trail if I want to make it a little bit longer or shorter. Uh, with a uh, shock cord for the foot box to keep my quilt from falling over the edge. And it's contained in this, uh, I believe it's called a bishop's bag. And these are the, uh, what they call the continuous loops that are on the end of the hammock. Uh, it can get smaller, so if I want to put other things in there, I can. Uh, I don't yet have an identifier on one or the other to tell me that that is the head end or the foot end. No big deal at the moment, but I'll probably be putting some kind of ribbon or marker on the strap. 
these straps or hook or loops also have button knocks in them. And uh, the fellow's name is Greg Evans, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from YouTube, who has a bunch of really good videos about using button knocks and shock shackles to connect things. And this would be used to connect to other parts of my suspension system. And those are two individual bags here. These are whoopee slings. They are about um, typical six foot whoopee sling, if I'm not mistaken. I um, believe they might be able to go a little bit longer, maybe eight feet, I can't remember, but they only come down to about four feet when they're pulled in. So if the trees are a little bit further away, I can use these to connect with. Otherwise, I'll just be connecting directly to the loops on the end of the hammock. On the trees, I go with the tree straps. Oops, sir. Uh, these are six feet long, nylon, one inch webbing. I also have a piece of uh, cable Velcro on, uh, sewn into it to help me keep them from flopping over the place. And uh, again, another Greg Evans, or Jeff Evans maybe, <laughs> sorry Jeff for Greg, uh, a soft shackle here, the button knot, uh, to allow me to loop my uh, strap around the tree and down through this. And it's very, very tough. I've used it and have not had any problems with that. Uh, and there are two of them. I am ordering some Dyneema webbing from Jeff himself that will come with a couple loops. I think he calls them the Evo loop, an evolution of the continuous loop. Going with those are a couple more continuous loops with the button knot in case I need to connect to the webbing or the hammock to extend things a little bit longer and two continuous ridge lines without the button knot. And these would be used to do things like a lark set onto the webbing and allow me to use the uh, whoopee signs to be able to feed the loop in there to adjust it as I need to. Anyway, they're just backups for backups. Uh, the hammock itself does not have an integrated bug net. I uh, didn't have really time to do that myself and uh, the trouble of doing it and it not working out, I didn't really want to have that happen. So I made my own uh, hammock bug net. It actually <laughs> doesn't compress any more than that. It's nearly as big as the hammock. Uh, and almost weighs the same, in fact. Uh, this is one that will go over the entire hammock and it has a bungee cord at the bottom. So I would get in from below and get into the uh, hammock. It also has a zipper down one side. The original idea would be that I would just go through the zipper hole. But first time I tried it, it was like very unworkable or not very user friendly at all. It was a vertical zipper as opposed to a horizontal. So that is in there as well, adding a little bit of weight. Uh, I don't know if I will be using this, but this is an inflatable pillow, just a very small one that I can use in the hammock to get my head off the hammock. And since I have a three quarter under quilt, which you'll see here in a moment, my head would be beyond the quilt and to avoid it getting really, really cold, I could wear a hat and that type of thing. But this will keep me off of the hammock and keep my head a little bit warm. So uh, again, I don't know if I'll do this, I might use a clothing bag instead. When I'm in a shelter or if there's some reason why I have to go to the ground to sleep, I have a Thermarest, uh, I think it's called the Neo Light, Neo Light. Uh, I think all the cool kids have it. It uh, is an inflatable mattress, very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got this used uh, here in, or in Victoria, so I paid uh, about forty or fifty dollars less than uh, full retail. They've only been used a few times. It's very plain, and I've tried sleeping on it a couple times, and uh, it's a lot better than using the folding pad that takes things on the side sleeper. And as for keeping warm in the hammock, here's another quote. I may have seen that this type of thing, a revelation enlightened quilts. I actually use their idea to make one for myself. Again, it has the zipper, it has the gathered end, and it has a few buckles along, this end, uh, along the back, and snap at the top with the cord to cinch it down to tie it around my net, so just like that. Uh, I don't have the straps or haven't bothered yet making them to potentially hook this to something going around the uh, inflatable mattress. I don't know if that would be a problem. It's geared toward a 30 degree uh, Fahrenheit, zero degree um, sleeping arrangement. I have slept in it in a little bit colder than zero uh, Celsius. 
um, maybe as much as five below, and uh, I didn't have any problem with this at all, but because I was sleeping pretty cold, uh, I thought I would wear what I would have when I was hiking, so I was wearing my puffy jacket, and that plus this, I can definitely go a lot colder than five below Celsius. Uh, it didn't feel cold at all with this at uh, zero. And the undercoat, both of them will go in here, but uh, this is a, a dry sack, so I'll go at the bottom of my pack. I have the undercoat, and I was using this to practice setting up my hammock in a park recently. So again, it's another homemade one, three-quarter length. I uh, use the shock cording for the gathering along the x-axis and the y-axis. Uh, the suspension just uses this toggle on the end to uh, stick through one of the loops in the hammock and that is what actually keeps it up. Plus I have a couple hooks on my ridge line that I can use to uh, attach the shock cord to kind of pull it up uh, at a steeper angle than if it was just pulled up at the end of the hammock. Uh, I've had to do that uh, to avoid a cold spot I had. And as I said, I used this down to zero, it's okay, but when we got down to five below, I felt a little cold between my butt and my uh, uh, knees. And the knees and beyond were protected in this. And above that, I guess the extra fat I have here right now, hopefully I'll lose that, but I have right now. And uh, the sweater I had that I wear uh, normally uh, on top of the base layer that I have. Uh, I don't have the tarp here, it's hanging in the backyard right now, I'm kind of practicing with it and adjusting a few things. But that would fold into, I mean, a mini pizza, or a personal pizza size, and about that thick, it can be compressed, compressed a little bit more, and that would go in the back uh, mesh pocket of the pack. Okay, moving on to clothing. I'll start with what I'm wearing right now. Um, this is the uh, typical what I'm wearing, as opposed to what I'm packing, clothing. Uh, I have a merino wool a taiga, uh, if I pronounce it correctly, uh, sweater jacket, full zip. Uh, it's very warm. I, it has two pockets as well. Uh, quite generous, so I like to wear this. Uh, you know, five degree weather, that type of thing. I have gone hiking with it, with the backpack, and this is a very good. Underneath this is a, you guessed it, another DIY product. I bought this material from Polar, not Polar, from Malden Mills years ago. It was a uh, wick away type of fabric, but it's kind of midweight, and it was a little too warm for gym clothing, and I didn't really use it for anything. So now I have a use for it, camping, uh, in cold weather. I recently added full length sleeves and the zip, quarter zip, to pull it on and off, make it a lot easier. And this will be the base layer. Uh, I also potentially can have underneath this uh, kind of a workout shirt, just uh, again, a very synthetic wick away shirt. I would wear at the gym. I have uh, two of these, I believe. And I'm wearing, uh, I think the brand is Marmot, uh, convertible pants with the zipper there. And they also have the zipper on the uh, leg here to put the boots on and off. And I'm wearing some. Uh, I think they're called a brand name is Wright with a W, uh, Wright socks. I also have other merino wool socks that are a little bit longer. And uh, this will be kind of a double layer type of thing. This is a very thin one. And hopefully that will help me prevent getting blisters. To continue with the feet, here we have the boots I'm taking. I'm not using the ultralight runners that most people will be having. Longest story I won't get into, but uh, the difference in weight between this and the ultralight version of this one is hardly anything. It's just a little bit of this material right here, the only difference. So I went a little taller. This is the type of boot I would typically wear. It was also Gore-Tex, which I know I hear people complaining about uh, how long it takes to dry, and I think that's probably very true. But uh, I'm expecting rain, and hopefully it will keep me from getting wet too early. Uh, after this pair of wears out, I'll probably go to the lower runners that everyone else has. Uh, mostly because the, I, was, I would say the, the wet weather will be done, but uh, yeah, I want to be like all the other cool kids. So, two of those. In camp, I'll be using these uh, Croc knockoffs, I think they are. 
Um, these are a little bit bigger than I would normally wear. I'm at pretty much a 10 and a half. Those are 12. Yes, yeah, they're 12. I got them bigger, so there's a lot of room for my toes. Uh, I've gone walking around a fair amount in them uh, recently, and I haven't had any problem with them being that size. And hearing how, how people feet as well. I don't know how quickly that will happen, but I got the larger size for that particular reason. These are also size 12, and they're a little bit bigger right now than I would like uh, the strap to help me keep them on when I cross the streams, that type of thing. And like I say, in the camp, and they're incredibly light, and they'll be stuck to the outside of my pack, I'm sure. And uh, beautiful green color. The only thing they had left are the hats. For the really cold part of it, this is a down hat that I can wear. I can look really dorky with it. The nice thing about it when I'm in the hammock and keep my head warm, sticking out from the quilt I have, I can also pull this down over my eyes and nose to keep that warm uh, if I want to go to sleep when it's still light out. It's very dark. This also flips up, of course, very soft material. And uh, when I'm on the ground, I can use my other clothing bag and slip this over top of it. Maybe I can do it. And uh, it's a very comfortable, smooth uh, pillow top cover. Uh, once the cold weather goes away, I can probably get rid of this. Um, more hats. So I have this beanie here, I believe it's just fleets. And uh, let's see, it's Mountain Hardware brand. Uh, I borrowed this from my friends. It's uh, Civil and Paul, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, I will return it. Uh, made of Polar Tech. And as for a buff, this is a merino wool sleeve that uh, the ones I bought that were buff brand, I believe, it just felt a little too tight around the neck and around the head when I put it on. And this is just a little bit bigger, uh, so it feels a lot more comfortable. And being merino wool, I know I'll be warm with it uh, when I want to be. You know, I don't have to worry about getting it wet. As for gloves, I've got two pair here right now. These are uh, a lighter weight glove. When I've gone hiking, uh, when weather was down around five to zero, I would just wear these to keep my hands covered. That's all I needed to keep them warm. I wasn't using poles or anything at the time, just you know to keep my bare skin from being exposed. And these were great. If I get into really cold weather though, these aren't gonna be enough. I could always slip these over my hands if I wanted to, but I also have this pair. They're a little bit more mid-weight, uh, stretchy fabric, plus the material on the outside allows you to operate a smartphone. Of course, the fingerprint scanner is going to work very well, but um, that's an option too, and they're very, very lightweight, so I might bring both pair. You know, once I uh, get to warmer weather, I can get rid of both of them as well. Next, underwear. I didn't talk about that one, what I'm wearing here, but uh, these are Calvin Klein. Um, these are a synthetic fabric and uh, box briefs. They are very, very comfortable. And I will have at least two pair, one here, the one pair I would be wearing, and the pair that's in the uh, bag of other clothing. Further on the outerwear, I have my puffy jacket. It's a down, 750 duck down, waterproofed, uh, or not waterproof, but the type of down that's made water tolerant. And it's from L.L. Bean. I've had it for a few years. I had one small prop once, I think, on the other side, where that was coming undone, and I, I fixed it myself rather than mail it back. Two zip pockets, and has the ability to flip it inside out through this pocket here and use it as a pillow. So it's another option. Very warm. And lastly, rain, rain protection. Wing protection. Uh, this is a North Face uh, raincoat. I don't know if it's a brand, or not brand, but model. But it has full pit zips, uh, two pockets, and the hood is great in that it really sticks to your head and when you turn it will turn with you. Uh, but being Vortex, it will be a little bit warm, I know, so I expect to have it open when I'm hiking with it uh, in rainy weather. Uh, I also have the poncho to try, and it will be a wind protection when it's quite windy and cold. It will go on top of the puffy jacket. I've done that before and it works very well. Okay, so much for what I'm wearing, typically. In here is my other clothing. And this will be sleepwear and alternative swapping day in, day out. Another pair of wool socks, a little bit thick. Uh, 
here's the other top I was talking about, the Jim uh, T. Uh, synthetic fabric, whip away type of thing. I don't even know what I have in here. Uh, these are merino wool types that I will wear to bed. And I don't think I have the merino wool top here, but uh, yeah, it is downstairs. There were a couple of holes in the back I had to mend. And I have shirts, which is what I would wear when I'm not wearing these. Uh, they're gym shirts. We've got two pockets on the front and one pocket on the back here. Uh, it has mesh at the moment. Uh, we'll see if I wear underwear or not with that. We'll find out, I guess. Again, Calvin Klein underwear. And I'm also trying a pair of waterproof socks. I haven't heard anything too fantastic about anyone who's had them. Uh, once my boots get wet and my socks get wet, I'll put these underneath the old socks so my feet can remain dry and everything else can get wet. We'll find out how that works. I also have a pair of sock liners that are compression socks. Uh, they're very thin and should be useful. And I have one more pair of merino wool socks. And as I said, the top I have downstairs and the long sleeve zip the high neck. And that all goes into this waterproof bag. Okay, now we go on to the kitchen and what I'm taking care of in the sense of food. Uh, don't have the food here, We're very obviously, uh, from start to finish. But I'm starting with this particular spice bag. That's salt, garlic powder, uh, I believe it's some cumin or chili powder, and uh, oh, I think I have some ozo uh, bouillon in here. So I don't know if I can bring that over the border though. It might be beef flavored. Uh, a lot of restrictions being a Canadian going over the border of the US, what type of food you can bring. Which is why, uh, other than some Mountain House and Alpen Air food, uh, to begin with, and chocolate bars, uh, packets of coffee, um, maybe some hot chocolate in a Ziploc bag, I really can't bring anything else without worrying about whether I'm breaking the law. And I don't want to <laughs> spend an hour in customs going through everything and uh, finding out that you know half of what I bought and brought with me I can't take. So I'll be picking things up uh, at a Walmart when I get into town in help in um, Atlanta. Uh, for cooking, I'm going to start here with my pot cozy. Uh, there's top, and there's bottom. It has an opening here so that I can take the uh, handles and slip it down in there and be able to pick it up and carry it around. Uh, this is a titanium pot, 750 milliliter. It's not a Eight, one of the brand name totes. Uh, it's a no name brand. It's Tanshiko uh, from China. Uh, inside of that, I have what could potentially be the cold soak option. Uh, bringing this anyway, just in case. It will fit perfectly in there, like uh, was made for it. And in the, here at the moment, I will have the Bic lighter to light the stove or fire or whatever I might want have my little propane stove. So tiny these things. I don't have the propane canister with me but uh, I guess we'll have to keep that separate if I'm keeping all this in the pot which is where people typically carry, uh, carry the propane. Uh, since I may not be able to get propane at the beginning because I'm not using a regular shuttle service that might be able to provide it for me, I'm bringing my alcohol fuel stove that I've used before and we'll buy, be buying some kind of uh, heat or whatever other materials I can find, methyl hydrate to, I don't know, uh, to fuel this for the first uh, few days until I get into a resupply situation where I can buy a propane tank. And uh, I have some tin foil here which can be used as a wooden screen for the alcohol stove or for the propane stove or to make a top here. I do have a top but I thought why well, bring a top it sits on top and I mean, I, it's gonna fall off I pick it up and do anything with it so I can just use this and wrap it over the top if I need to. And as I said, I may try cold soaking a few things, uh, like oatmeal and that type of thing, but we'll find out. I've never tried it, so it'll be a new experience for me. But as you can see, it fits in there perfectly. It's like a can. Um, this is the reflux material uh, warmer bag for things like side dishes or 
a larger Ziploc bag that might have food in it. I'll go in there and I can do that. It has a dusted bottom, so it will stand when it's got things in there. And I can leave it and come back to it uh, after 10 minutes, whatever, 20 minutes. Hopefully everything will be nice and warm still. I've played with it here at home, uh, but indoors, and everything has been very hot when I would open it and reuse it, so I think it'll be okay. Uh, for eating utensils in this little bag here, I have a couple things. One is the traditional titanium spoon. Again, uh, this is not the typical American brand. <laughs> I bought this from AliExpress, another one, um, and it works beautifully. I've uh, tried it a few times and uh, it uh, works well in my mouth. Anyway, I also bring chopsticks. Not just for the ramen or something like that, but uh, I mean, this is useful to you, uh, stir up things at the bottom of the packets when you pour water into it and get right down in the corners. And uh, it's about the same length as a spoon, so, but it's got that pointy end. And I can use it to pick up things if I need to. Of course, I go to the little bag here. Uh, for the bear bag, I'm just using this, uh, I think it's a 20 liter, 20 liter ripstop nylon coated uh, waterproof bag. This will be able, bigger than enough to keep all my food in. And uh, another DIY item, my rock bag, which I will probably line with some Gorilla tape. And inside is some. Dyneema style webbing, or well, webbing, but cord that I bought uh, online with a little carabiner that I'll use. I can use this carabiner as well to attach this bag to the cord and lift it up into the tree. And uh, I believe this is about 50 feet, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I think that's it for the moment. Okay, moving on to kind of an odd as an end type of uh, pile here. Uh, this will be the type of things that contain toiletries and medicine and uh, electronics. So first we'll have my plastic sunglasses, which if I lose, no big deal. I think they were like 15 bucks. Uh, they're for bicycles, so they're quite hugging on the face. And this bottle I'm using to put this stuff into, uh, as vain as I may be about my hair, um, has been thinning for quite a long time and this eye drop. Uh, a few drops in here every morning and every evening. Uh, it's a vanity thing, but uh, if you stop doing it, I believe things fall out a little quicker. And uh, I haven't got, quite got to that point where I'm going to shave my head or, you know, just live with it like that. Uh, in the back here, these are wet naps, I think they're called. You know, baby wipes. Uh, these are dehydrated already. This is a full packet that I've squished in here, I think maybe like a hundred of them. But I'm not doing uh, boxes uh, uh, for resupply, so I'm going to carry them both. They weigh virtually nothing. Uh, a non-ultra non lighter would say that. Uh, the bag lost up a bit of air in here right now, so you can press a little bit uh, flatter. And I've heard enough great things about using those that I think it's worthwhile taking them. Further in my bag, I have a little notepad here just to be able to write a note when I want to and post it to a tree or something like that if I want to communicate to people behind me. Mm -hmm. I also have a space pen. It's not here, it would be in my uh, pant pocket. Uh, you know, the Fisher bullet model. This is the repair kit for the Thermarest and also uh, three uh, rookstop nylon self heat patch for my puppy coat or for the rain fly or who knows where I might need that. Again, it might be a luxury item. It's a combination potential deodorant and uh, heel crack uh, rejuvenator. It's coconut oil, equal parts, coconut oil, cornstarch, and baking powder or baking soda. Uh, I've been using it for a while as a deodorant. Uh, just like making things, so it worked out quite well. And I heard that coconut oil is very good for heels, uh, and I guess uh, taking care of your feet is kind of important. So I will be bringing this, and you know, maybe I won't use it as deodorant and embrace the stink, but I, at least I can use it on my feet. Next, I'm bringing a spare pair of headphones. I will have a pair of headphones that I'll be walking with. Uh, I always find that the cord at the plug end is where it breaks down and. 
Uh, usually they don't last more than a month or two before I have to replace them, so $10 item. Here are the dental aspect of life. A couple of containers of dental floss, a travel size toothpaste, a travel size toothbrush. I do have a little comb in there. Like I say, there's not maybe a lot up here, but call it that. These are washers. There's the one for the severe filter, and these ones are different size gaskets for the travel bidet in case I have to use a different bottle than the one I have now, which has the gaskets on it that fit the smart water. I've heard people talk about using hand warmers, and I've had these in my closet for a couple of years. They're still good, uh, date-wise, uh, until well, middle of the year anyway. And uh, I figure I can probably use these in the beginning when it gets really cold in my uh, bottom of my sleeping quilt or you know, just get my hand warm again. Next, we have a couple microfiber uh, uh, cloths. They're about eight inches by eight inches. Uh, for wiping down equipment or my tarp and that type of thing. Uh, I get the dew off of it before I pack it away. This is what they call a KT, or kinesiology tape. Um, I've cut a few different widths and lengths, and uh, I've played with this and found that, boy, this stuff really hangs onto your skin. Uh, easy enough to pull it off, but even if you have a square corner, which is usually where the beginning of it coming off is, uh, after wearing it for a day or two and taking a shower with it and just having it right here using it uh, when I did whatever I do through the day, it never even shown like it never even looked like it was going to come off. So I've got that. It would be great for the protection for the bottom of my feet or between my toes or wherever I need it. And uh, it doesn't weigh a whole lot. Earplugs. Maybe I'll be giving these away because I do snore a little bit. You know, not really loud. At least I think. I put an app in my iPhone and recorded myself in the last week or two, and uh, I do have a bit of it. I side sleeper, but uh, I do have that little bit of a problem. So, if, you know, if they're going to complain, I can give them a pair. Otherwise, they better come protected. I have a Sharpie marker. I also have a highlighter in here for my uh, A wall guide that I'm bringing with me. I have a couple of clips here to hang clothing on the line. Hopefully it will help dry, or you know whatever I might need a clip for. They're very very light. Um, this is the medicine stuff. So I've got a bottle of Tums uh, in case I have a bit of you know tummy problem. I've got a lot more calcium. Uh, Sinu tab. I find that uh, in change of weather, I will have a sinus buildup and it will apply pressure to the back of my eyes, and I'll have a bit of a headache, and it will take me a day or so to figure out what the problem is. And I need to take care of it, otherwise it will hang on for like a week. In here I have a number of other things. I have some old Tylenol 3 from some dental work I had done. I've got a couple straight razors to cut off uh, calluses or corns if I need to, or cut something else. I've got the little sewing kit. I've got a tube uh, of, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that chemical, but uh, for foot fungus, uh, jock itch, that type of thing. Uh, a couple band-aids. I've got diarrhea medicine, I've got some ibuprofen, I've got some Advil, uh, and a little tube of ointment. Um, don't think there's anything else in there. I can think of a safety pen or two. Uh, but I've never used a medical kit, probably ever, other than maybe for a band-aid. But uh, I figure I'd probably get some use out of this stuff on this trip. That all goes into this waterproof zip up bag. Additionally, I will have some this probably should have been the food uh, category. These are uh, the type of tablets you put into your water to give you electrolytes. So I'll throw that over them to the food category. <laughs> Here I have a couple wire ties. Funny thing about this, I bought these at Mount Equipment Co-op. They were, I think, $4.50 or something like that for the two of them. Uh, the thing about these is that they have uh, a regular butt blunt end and uh, another that has the eyelet that you can stick things through and connect things that way if you want to. And they had right next to it another pair, same size wire, same length, but it had two blunt ends, and it was $1.50 more. 
for two. And I thought, well, what's the point of that? I mean, these are more versatile and I can use them the same way. So anyway, I got these, I can hook my umbrella or my trucking poles to my pack with that. Uh, this is my little tripod that I use to hang on to and do my videoing with. Uh, also, it has the long, you know, about 12, 15 inch long uh, Velcro here that can wrap around a tree limb or uh, I can put on the trucking pole over top of one of the uh, connectors or the, the uh, sliders so that it will not roll underneath and use the trucking pole to do my video. And there's also the attachment, which is on there right now, uh, that will hold the smartphone. Here's some chapstick. Uh, I've never used this, but I can tell uh, when I go hiking for any length of time that my lips may get a little bit uh, dry, so I'm gonna go bring that. And I have a spare bottle of Purell. Uh, not that I need, maybe need it, but I thought, well, when I get to town and I have to buy some more Purell or split it with somebody, I'm gonna have two bottles I can potentially fill and uh, utilize it a little bit better. Because I don't really know when I'm uh, washing my hands, maybe two, three times a day, uh, in the camp cycle, whatever, how quickly that bottle will go down. Uh, I was supposed to have a neck knife, but it didn't arrive in time. And um, I've gone looking for little knives. I don't want to bring a Bowie knife or anything like that. I have my uh, Smith's Army knife. It has quite a few things on here. It's a little bit hefty. I really don't want to bring this one. So I may end up going and buying one that will have like one small blade, you know, to cut cheese or to cut salami, that type of thing. And uh, a little pair of scissors. And it would be nice to have tweezers or something like that in case there's a tick problem. Uh, here I have it. I should have probably had it for my pack. This will be a bandana that will go uh, on top of the pack. I might also get another bandana to clean my cooking pot, that type of thing. And finally, we come to electronics. Besides the iPhone 7 Plus that I'm using up there with the uh, shock case, I am not bringing any water protection for it. I did buy a case for it, but I found out that the phone in question, uh, I think, has the ability to go eight or 10 feet underwater uh, for a length of time and keep working. So I don't think I'll need it for rain, but I bought a battery pack to be able to recharge that. And also my headlamp, which I did talk about earlier that is on order, it's rechargeable. Uh, this is the Anchor Power Core to 28,600 milliamp battery. So I, let me tell you, this is a hefty battery. It's a pound and a half all by itself. There's a little battery indicator here. If you can see it. Um, it has the two USB ports and the one USB mini, I believe, or USB-C, I'm not sure. Uh, it does come with the cords for uh, male, double male uh, USB, two USB-C, and micro USB, I believe. Uh, it can get kind of confusing. Anyway, all the cords are here. So there's one each that came with it. And the power charger, and it only has one port. But uh, the great thing about this is that it will charge up that whole battery in like four and a half hours. I've seen people who've had batteries that were less capacity that would take them 12 hours. And if I don't use this particular charger on here and just use uh, no name, it will take up to 24 hours to power that sucker up. So, and then uh, it's a little bit overkill. I can recharge my phone 10 times, and I'm sure I'm not probably going to use it that often between a town every three days but uh, you never know when I'm doing a lot of video and maybe doing a lot of editing and my headlamp if I use it a lot uh, I'll maybe be quite happy that I have this but you know unfortunately I got that weight penalty and that will go in this bag and I have some in this bag I also have uh, some little packets and some like yourself to help regulate the atmosphere when they're packed away um, other than hiking poles that I'll be bringing, I'll probably be bringing. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that uh, I haven't shown you from my pack. Uh, I do have a gear list online, or weigh everything, and with non-consumables, I think I come in at like anywhere from 17 or 18 pounds. So it's heavier than I want to be, but I tell you what I've got on the back. I've had heavy packs, and it's not much, but. When I start adding food and water, uh, the water bottles will be on the straps. Uh, I suppose I will be getting up close to 30 pounds. And, uh, I, but I don't think that would be too big a problem. Again, I, I'm not an ultra light hiker. Otherwise I wouldn't have some of the 
things like that have and would be trimming straps and that type of a deal. But uh, I'm a lightweight uh, hiker. I've gone on three day hikes where I've carried 45, 50 pounds in my backpack and uh, I do not want those type of days again because after a while they are weighing on your shoulders and are heavy. And hence buying the new backpack as I did. Uh, anyway, I think that's it. Well, I'm getting ready for my flight to Toronto for a wedding and then to the Appalachian Trail and trying to get my pack in the proper shape it needs to be in uh, for the flight and what clothes I'll need while I'm in Toronto and keeping it all in one bag, <laughs> if you want to say. Uh, here is what that would look like. So here's the bag, big uh, hockey duffel bag and inside I have my pack fully packed minus uh, any lithium ion battery and over here are garbage bags or grocery bags filled with suit jackets and clothing and shoes and my boots are in there my poles are in there and hopefully everything will make it to Toronto and then when I fly to Georgia it will just be the pack and me also have a carry-on bag because I'm going to bring a few things um, along the way.